Hey, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to start this out with a prayer before we get to our Bible study. Dear Father, I pray and ask that you take away all my own opinions, Lord, my own thoughts, my own words. And please let your Holy Spirit guide me through this message, Lord, and to the will of what you want me and allow me to say, Lord. Give me the words to speak, Lord, and the wisdom and understanding and discernment to hear your voice so I can teach it, Lord. And give those watching, Lord, understanding and discernment, faith also. And open their eyes and ears to your truth, Lord, and their heart to receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I always forget to check where we left off before I start the video. Darn it. I don't know, but we're going to start in chapter 4 of Galatians. Now I say that the hearer, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, when Jesus came to relieve us from the bondage of the flesh and the law pertaining to the flesh, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under, a law, born under the law, the law that pertains to flesh, Moses' law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave of the law, but a son of grace. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. And what Christ did for us. Nothing we can do or add to or take away from. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you serve those which by nature are not God's. Lowercase g. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God. Now, see, that's you got to understand that. But, but then indeed... When you did not know God, we served the nature, we served which was by nature, are not gods. But now after we know, but now after you have known God, but it says, or rather God knows us, because the sin that was on our lives in the bondage of the flesh well, didn't allow God to see us unless we kept every bit of the law, every bit of it. And it was impossible because we were weak through the flesh. So God sent his only son to cover us in his blood and redeem us so that we can be known by God again. So God can look upon us again because the blood of Jesus covers us. So, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. He's saying, we have been redeemed from the fleshly law that pertains to the flesh and the law of sin. Why do we, now that we have been seen by God and born again, and is a new creature in Christ, why do we want to turn back and go back to the bondage of the old law that Christ freed us from? If you guys do that and think that way, that means you're saying Jesus came and died in vain for no reason. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, the fleshly infirmities, I preached the gospel to you at the first. In my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. <coughs> What then was the blessing you enjoyed? Question, he's asking them. For I bear you witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. Because the Jews are trying to preach to people that telling them, they need to be circumcised, they're still under the law, and they need to follow all the things of the fleshly law. And he's telling and he's saying they're doing that so that they may be zealous zealous for them. 
so they can get some enjoyment out of it. But it is a good but it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. My little children for whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed in you. Till Christ is formed in us. I would like to be present with you now and change my tone, for I have doubts about you. I tell tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons. The one by a bondswoman, or you could say the one under the old law, and then the other was by a free woman under the law of and faith of grace in Jesus Christ. So Abraham had two sons, the law, and then Jesus Christ, who, whom is free from the law. But it's, it's saying bondswoman and free woman. But he who was of the bondswoman of the law was born according to the flesh, because that law pertains to our flesh, which we were crucified from, and we now live in the Spirit. And he of the free woman, which is of the Spirit, through promise of faith, the promise of Abraham. Which things are symbolic? For these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, from Moses, which gives birth to bondage, because we are weak through the flesh, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children, because they are under the law. They think they're under the law still. But the Jerusalem above is free. Spiritual Jerusalem, the seed of Abraham, us, anyone who believes in Jesus, and we were set free from that law. Which is the mother of us all, for it is written, <clears throat> Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Cast out the law and her son. For the son of the bondswoman shall not be here with the sons of the free woman. So, the people that think they're under the law shall not be here with us, the seed of Abraham, the ones of promise, through faith. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondswoman, of the law, but of the free woman of Jesus, of grace and faith. How can a fleshly law that was given to Moses pertaining to the flesh, how can that still pertain to someone who, was, who died to the flesh on the cross with Christ, rose again as a new creature in a new spirit, put on the body of Christ, and now we are led by the spirit of Christ in us? not by the flesh. So that old law does not pertain to a new creature that was never even that was never before until Jesus came and died and rose again. Chapter 5. Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed I Paul say to you that if you become circumcised, if you become under the law, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised or becomes under the law that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. The whole law. You have become estranged by, from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision Neither Jew nor Gentile avails anything but faith working it through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So a little... A little... Uh, what's the word? A little deceit will, dis, will ruin the, the whole lump. I have confidence in you and the Lord that you will have no other mind. But he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, if I still preach the law, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I 
could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. One second, guys. Sorry. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the old law. We are now under the law of grace and love and faith. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealous, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revileries, and, like, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is how you know if you're led by the Spirit, because you will have the fruit of the Spirit in your life manifest. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. You will know if you're led by the Spirit because you won't be able to control it. It will lead, lead you and your flesh will have to follow the Spirit because the Spirit leads the flesh. Before the flesh led our spirit through the law. But now we are led by the Spirit and the flesh follows we are dead to the flesh. We live inside in our inward man, in the spirit. So, we now serve God through our heart and mind, through truth and faith and spirit. Chapter 6, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespasses, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Because when you receive Christ and you become a spirit being a new creation in Christ and him and us it will transform your mind the way you think the way you th think about things you'll th start thinking more spiritual minded you'll start wanting to know more about God and his word and you'll start being addicted to it and it'll start overcoming every other desire in your life because you will be led by the spirit of God not by the fleshly lusts it'll be easier for you to overcome the fleshly lusts and desires. Because we will have the Spirit of God in us who overcame the flesh. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word Share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be, be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh, so he who sows to earthly things, things pertaining to the flesh, will also reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit realm, he who sows to the spirit things of God, will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. See that what large letters I have written to you with my own hand, as many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, to be circumcised, to become under the old law, which should bring you under bondage. 
only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So, they don't want to suffer the persecution for the cross of Christ because when you put on Christ, you will suffer persecution for His name and for our faith in Him. Because the servant is not greater than the master. Jesus told us, if I suffered and was persecuted, you will also be too. And even some unto death. But don't lose faith because it is a far greater reward we will have when He appears in glory and we become like Him and we see Him as He truly is. Not a broken, beaten flesh, but the true form of Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may brag in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon Israel of God. From now on let one trouble, no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. That was the end of Galatians. We're going to start in Ephesians now. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as He chose us, He chose us, not we didn't choose Him, He chose us before the foundations of the world. In Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Having predestined us, He predestined it, way before it ever even happened or was thought of, us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his own will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted and beloved. God has us in these last days, because we are for sure 100% in the last days. Jesus is coming any time. No one knows that day nor hour. But he says, we will know the seasons. As you can tell when a thunderstorm's coming, by the clouds are dark and you can feel the dew of the rain. How shall you not know and discern the seasons of his coming, which are we in now, very far into? Okay, we've been in the birth pangs for a long time now. And it's almost going to be tribula great tribulations any moment. Now I'm telling you guys, God predestined us. He saved the best for last, the strongest for last, to be in this time exactly where we're at now because we have a reason. He has a reason for us to be here, a purpose. He could have chose any of the old prophets to be in this time, but he chose us, and he has a calling for your life and for my life for this very time that we are living in. So don't be discouraged. God does not... His words, that never, his, words his work... His will never returns void. It will be done. And His will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. In Him we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times and the end of the world, he might gather together in one, which is Christ, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. So he's going to gather us all into Christ, things in heaven and in earth. And then after that, he's going to gather Christ into himself. So God, it will all be in God and God will be one in all, as it was in the beginning. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his own will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. It's all about him and his glory and magnifying his name. Nothing to do with us. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So the word of truth, the word of Jesus Christ is our salvation if we receive it with love, and it takes root in us, and then it bears fruit. And we receive the Holy Spirit, which 
is the adoption of us as sons, and it seals us until the day that Jesus comes to take us home. In whom also, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption, until the redemption of the purchased possession comes, to praise of his glory. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in prayers, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, in every name that is named, only not only in this age, but also in the which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and is in all. Chapter 2. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is the Satan, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are sitting on the right hand of God inside of Christ Jesus right now as we speak. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for works, for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off and been brought near by the blood of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments, contained in ordinances. So he broke down the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, pertaining to our flesh, so as to create in himself one new man from the two covenants, thus making peace and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and to those who are near. For through him we both have access by the Spirit to the Father. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So we are being built together as one body inside of Christ, so that God may dwell in Christ, in us all, in the Spirit, because we are now a new creation and we are spiritual. Not flesh. We are a new creation that never was by bringing the two covenants, the uncircumcision and the circumcision, together and abolishing, taking away the old law of commandments and ordinances against us, bringing the uncircumcision and the circumcision together inside of Christ, 
molding them as one new man, one new creation, building us up as a dwelling place for God in Christ. It's very important. We dwell in Christ as one new man so that God may come and dwell in Christ, which is all of us. We put on the body and mind of Christ so God now dwells in, our, in us because we dwell in Christ. And Christ dwells in God also. So it's the, the mystery is God in us and us in God through Christ. I love you guys. Please share this video. I got to cut it off because my video will cut off soon if I don't. This phone only lets me record for like 27, 30 minutes. And then it messes up really bad because I don't have enough memory. I love you guys. God bless you. Go back and study this over and over. And study all our other videos and study and study and study. It's so important. And spread the word of God. Pray for discernment, wisdom, understanding, faith, love, charity. In Jesus' mighty name. Repent of your sins. Ask for forgiveness. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and King. And ask him in your heart. And he will fill you with the Holy Spirit and seal you until the day of redemption when he comes to take us home. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen.